I've got bad news. You're doing hydration wrong. Are you going on super long, strenuous hikes with nothing but a little, little water bottle? Are you chugging plain water like your life depends on it when it's 105 degrees and you just finished eight miles? <laughs> well, if you are, and you feel wiped out, low energy, or worse, dizzy, headachey, or nauseated, I've got bad news. You're doing hydration wrong. Yup, we're gonna talk about dehydration. Cause it's summer, and it's hot. Heck, it's June, and we've already seen heat advisories across the country. And it seems like no matter what notices or news reports are floating around the airwaves warning people to please be careful, a bunch of folks head outside for strenuous activity totally unprepared and then need air lifted out of the Grand Canyon. Stop, you guys. Just stop. Not going outside altogether, I mean, good luck keeping me inside even in the sweltering heat. But if you're not fully prepared for what could happen in that sweltering heat, and you're not packing everything you need to keep your body hydrated, then listen, do us all a favor and stay home and read a book, okay? Here's why, and buckle up, because we're about to get real sciencey up in this joint. First things first, on short hikes or when it's not that hot out, just drink enough water. The general rule is about half a liter per hour when it's not super hot and closer to a liter when it is. And that will do just fine for up to 60 to 90 minutes of activity. Why the difference in timing? If you're not a super salty sweater, then I have good news. If you're planning to be outside for 90 minutes or less, you're probably good with plain old water the whole time. Health experts say our bodies store a reserve of sodium and potassium, so for short excursions, don't sweat it. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> That's my elbow. Hold on, wait, ouch. I'm not having a good day. I'm fine. How do you know if you're a salty sweater? Well, when you play outside and get all sweaty, are there chalky white lines on your clothes when they dry? If so, <laughs> congratulations, friend. You're a salty sweater. So you might need more than plain old water after 60 minutes of activity. Either way, after 60 to 90 minutes, especially if it's super friggin' hot out and you're working super friggin' hard, water isn't enough to replace all that salty sweat that's now soaking your suncher. So you're gonna need to grab some dang electrolytes. Now, we're gonna talk about electrolytes a bunch, so let's define what the heck that actually means. Basically, they're a collection of minerals and nutrients your body needs to survive, but also keep you functioning properly when you're sweating a lot. Mostly, they contain sodium, aka salt, but also potassium, calcium, and magnesium in smaller quantities. Why do you need more of all of this when you're sweating? Because maintaining a healthy balance of water and sodium in the blood is super duper important when it comes to stabilizing your body temperature and keeping cardiovascular and muscle function working efficiently. But if you're sweating, you may be losing more water and salt than you're replacing. So if you need water in your blood, you should just chug some, right? Well, no, probably not. That can actually lead to hyponatremia in extreme cases, which happens when there's a dangerously low concentration of sodium in the blood, as in you sweated too much and now you're replacing it with just water, which can be deadly because cell function becomes impaired. I know, super sciencey. I did warn you. So you need a balance of salt and water to replace sweat, which is mostly salt and water. Ideally about 300 to 700 milligrams of sodium per hour or so, plus calcium, potassium, and magnesium. Though sodium is the main electrolyte you lose when you sweat, meaning it's also the most important to replace. Skip the electrolytes and you may experience muscle cramps, a general lack of energy or reduced performance, or the minor effects of heat exhaustion like dizziness. Fun fact, one study showed endurance athletes suffering from as little as 2% dehydration can experience impaired performance. Severe dehydration starts at 10%, but you can start experiencing symptoms like headaches and dizziness at a 5% dehydration level. What's more, the average person sweats out between 16 and 67 ounces of perspiration per hour when active. So you might lose between 250 and 2,000 
1,000 milligrams of sodium every 60 minutes, depending on your body type, activity level, heat index, effort, even altitude. Yeah, you need to drink 25 to 50% more water when exercising at altitudes over 10,000 feet, according to some experts. So yeah, I keep electrolytes in my pack on every hike, just in case. What are my faves? <laughs> So glad you asked. Honestly, I enjoy me some scratch labs, including the daily hydration option, which has less sugar in it. But I'm also a big fan of untapped maple, both the powdered electrolyte mixes and the salted syrup packets that taste just as good in water as they do on pancakes. Though, frankly, when we're setting off on an adventure close to home, Josh will just add some maple syrup and salt to a water bottle, and that works too. You can also just mix light salt, which has potassium and calcium in it, in a mixture of water and juice, which, voila, makes electrolytes. You can also just eat salty snacks and drink regular water during less intense or endurance-based activities. So back your bags with salty snacks and plenty of electrolytes for your water, and don't call search and rescue to get airlifted out of the Grand Canyon. I mean, honestly.